welcome. This is our feasting on words little how-to video. I want to show you how to make a Bavarian apple tort because this is different from any of the apple pies we'll be making in class, but it's really good. Bavarian means it is from an area of Germany and uh, this recipe was actually given to me by a friend from our Church Our Saviors, um, Louise Jordan, she shared it with me when she gave it for Josh's baby shower that the congregation threw me. And her husband is actually from Germany, so it could be a very authentic German recipe for all I know. So a couple things that make this different. You need a springform pan. This is the kind of pan that you assemble and then you close up like so which is nice when you make this kind of tort because when it cools, then you're able to unlock it and uh, separate the parts. And it's just really handy for torts and cheesecakes and that kind of thing. So first of all, I have some butter here. We're going to do three parts. We're going to have our crust, our filling, and then our apples on top. So this is why I wanted to show you this. This is a different kind of crust. This is the torque crust. So we have half a cup of butter I just put in, and I'm going to add a third cup of sugar to that. And I'm also going to add vanilla to this, one quarter teaspoon. So basically, this is almost like a sugar cookie crust because some of these ingredients are similar to what you find in a sugar cookie. I'm going to use the paddle because it's just easier to scrape off in the end. So we're going to beat that up. Isn't that looking nice and fluffy? Okay. Once that is beaten, I want to make sure I get all of it. Got to scrape the sides. That's always important. And now I'm going to add my flour into this buttery mixture. Oh, too bad you can't smell it. It smells like sugar cookies. It's so yummy. Okay, so for flour, we're going to put in one cup of flour. There we go. And turn that up. Remember not to turn your blender up too high or the flour will shoot everywhere. It even looks like cookie dough, doesn't it? All right, I'm going to increase the speed a little bit. Actually, it, it looks very similar to how our dough crumbs look for making a regular pie pastry before we add the water to it. I can feel that it's thickening up. It's starting to stick together because it's blending harder and harder. So that's about all I need to beat that up. Just have to kind of make sure there's still some buttery parts here. And I don't want that. I want it well incorporated. So I guess scrape those sides. Oh yeah, there's some that's just very buttery down there. And one more beating before we spread that into the spring form pan. It's lost a little. All right, that looks like it's all mixed in now. So, get all these crumbs. Now, the nice thing I've learned is when you make something like this, you don't necessarily have to wash the blender blade and the bowl in between each part. I mean, after all, it's all going in the same recipe. Um, so we're going to save a cleaning step that way. So I'm getting all these chunks of filling. And we're going to not only press it into the bottom of the pan, but also up the pan at least an inch up the side of the pan. Because you'll see we're actually putting in four cups of apple and a base below that. So. This is going to be rather tall, and we want to have the pastry kind of hold it all in there. So I actually want to kind of eyeball 
how high up the side I'm aiming for. Get some crumbs up that way because the bottom is easier to do than the sides of the pan here. Because the bottom I just squish down. Ooh, it's kind of sticky. I might need a little flour on my fingers. Okay. Oh, that's much better. Good trick. Okay. I'm over halfway around this. Mmm, it smells good. Okay, well, that's a vanilla smell here. Oops, sticky part. Grab some of that, push that up. Okay, and I'm just kind of looking to see if there's any low spots and adding a little more to those low spots so that the whole thing is high enough around the edge. I mean, if it spills out a little, that's okay. Now, it's really thick right here in this corner and I really don't need it to be so I'm going around the edge here pressing it down and out ooh how do I get that low spot get that up push this up here a little higher now if you're a perfectionist you may want to go around with a knife and make it all really nice and even It'll taste the same, whether it's even or crooked, but a lot of times you're going for how it looks, too. I mean, you want it to look nice and pretty and appetizing. So maybe we'll do that just to get a few more crumbs for the middle here, because I have some gaps. I have a few holes that need to be filled. But then again, there's a thick spot right there. This is the most time-consuming part about this whole tort, to spread this crust in here. But compared to rolling out a pastry, I need one more flour, to rolling out a pastry, it's a little easier in some regards if you struggle to roll a uniform crust. And this crust is somewhat forgiving too if you have tiny little gaps because as it bakes it does kind of fill those in but you don't want any gaping holes you really do want to make sure it's pretty pretty solid all around okay so over here I had this low spot yet I'm gonna push that up this low spot here push that up around it's not too bad it's not perfect but it'll be okay it's fairly even okay I think I'm satisfied oh not quite there's a hole there there's a hole in the pie crust the pie crust the pie crust there's a hole in the pie crust dear Liza a hole what do you think good is that complete Yep, still a hole there. Don't want a hole. The other thing is you don't want your filling leaking out and dripping all over the bottom of the oven and burning and smelling and making the smoke alarm go on. Okay, I'm gonna say that is ready for us to proceed onto our second layer then of filling. And that's going to have some cream cheese in it. So I'm going to attach this back on here. I have my package of cream cheese here. I've had it sitting out for a little bit so that it is soft at room temperature. No need to microwave this like we've sometimes done with the butter. Any of the 
And to the cream cheese, we are just adding a quarter cup of sugar and more vanilla, half a teaspoon here. you don't have any lumpiness because then you have chunks of cream cheese. So that's a fairly nice smooth consistency. Looks pretty well blended. So we're going to take that and we're going to pour it into our crust. What's interesting about this recipe is you don't bake the crust. Some recipes will have you bake the crust before you add these other ingredients in. But pre-bake so it's hard and set and then you have to wait for it to cool before you add the cream cheese. But here we're just doing one layer after another. Okay. I have to give a shout out to my patient little videographer. Toby is filming this for us. I could do a selfie too. <laughs> and we're gonna plop that in there. And once we have our bowl emptied, we'll spread it so it's a little more even. You know, on those real cooking shows, there's usually these secret helpers who take away your garbage and your eggshells and all of that and whisk some new item out for you. We're doing it solo here. Okay, got this last bit. I'm gonna make sure that's included. Whenever you're dealing with a cheesy kind of filling like this, one of the ways to just get it spread out and even is to take it on and kind of tap it down. Okay, so the last part, oops, flying eggshell. Nobody saw that, right? The last part of this is with our apple. So, 
I have taken two honey crisp apples, and I mean these are some big apples. Take a look at that. They are big. Okay, so I only needed two of them. I peeled them and cored them and sliced them. Pretty thin slices, not ultra thin, but thin enough. And uh, that's going to get mixed with one third cup of sugar and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. Now what I find is easiest is if you mix your cinnamon and sugar together first in a bowl. And then put it on your apples. Mix that up. So we've got our cinnamon and sugar together. Very basic. Pour that over. And just get those all nicely coated. I can see there's some cinnamon and sugar kind of hanging out on the bottom of this. And always pour that over the top at the end. So now what's fun about this is we are going to put these in one at a time and layer them around. I'll probably have to go a couple layers deep as I do this, but you can make a very nice pattern as you go and maybe kind of see, I'm trying to figure out how that middle part's going to turn out. See, they're not quite all the same size. Some are bigger than others. We'll stick a big one in that way. And let's see, what should we do in the middle? One like that, one like that, like a mouth. And I'll do another layer on top of this. Might even have enough apples here for three layers. Two and a half. Let's see. Better not forget my little smiley face going on here. Now I could do them even more upright and really embed them in the cream. But this will work. Better stack a couple here. It seems like it's taller on the outside than the middle. Almost out of apples. And I'm kind of looking to see if there's any spots that seem a little shy of apples. Maybe one more kind of tucked in here. And a couple bits and pieces there. Maybe one there like so. And that one. And that. And just get that good stuff out. I'm going to just throw that right in the center closely. Get that off the edge. So you can see where I had my crust, that's about perfect. It's about that high. So this is going to bake in the oven, but first my finishing touch is to sprinkle it with some sliced almonds. So about a quarter cup. And I could be tedious and set them in there, but I'm just going to go for the random effect and sprinkle them and let them fall where they will. Lost a couple over here. And voila, Bavarian apple tort ready to go in the oven. So it bakes at 450, really hot temperature, for 10 minutes, and then it's going to be at 
400 for 25 minutes, and then it'll be done. Loosen the edge and let it cool, and then you're ready to go with it. So, thanks for joining me for our Bavarian apple tort. Hope you have a chance to make it, and enjoy.